Okay, everyone, so on our first day of class, what we're going to do, if you have no experience in programming, this will be your crash course into it. If you've had experience in programming before, specifically HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, this might be a little bit of a rehash, but it doesn't hurt to see the concepts again. So we're going to start with our basic introduction to HTML, which is what our project is going to be based in. HTML, which is a language invented in around 1989, it powers websites. But we can use HTML in a modern way to then convert that code into an Android app or an iPhone app, Windows Phone app, etc. So let's go ahead and go to the Start menu. Click Start at the bottom left. If you're a Mac person, raise your hand, I'll help you out. But um, go to the Start menu and start searching here. Search on the box here, Notepad and you should see Notepad++. Notepad++ is free software that you can get for Windows. There's many software out there to program. If you've got Windows at home, I recommend Notepad++. There's a bunch of other ones. You have your favorite one. Use your favorite one. But in this class, we're going to use Notepad++. If you're on a Mac, at home, there is no Notepad++. There's a bunch of other software. One that I would recommend is called Brackets. So if you're on the Mac, you can get Brackets. They've also got Brackets for Windows. We're going to look at Notepad++. Go ahead and launch Notepad++ from your Start menu. If you get any pop-up that says about updating Notepad, don't worry about it. Just cancel it you might get a screen of the latest bug fixes, whatever. Go up to File, New. File, New, and then we'll go to File, Save As. If you brought a USB drive, you want to plug it in and save this. What we're going to create, however, today is not so mission critical that you'll be lost without it next time. If you don't save your work today, that's okay. I can give you a copy of my work next time. But if you brought a USB drive, you can save to it at the moment. In that network folder, I'm going to give um, my work uh, every time we come back. And at the end of the day, I'll give you a copy of my work just for you to check to make sure you've done the work properly. Let's file Save As and save it to your desktop or your flash drive. And down on the bottom here, file name and save type. On save type, make sure you change save type over to hypertext markup language. Make sure you're saving it as HTML. If you save it as normal text, it's not a website. Make sure you're saving it as HTML hypertext markup language. And the name can be anything, but I'm just going to call it today's date, 2016-02-09, whatever you want. So go ahead and save this with hypertext markup language, type, whatever name, and then click Save. Let's make sure we've all saved our brand new empty document. Of course, at any point, if you're having any trouble, raise your hand, I'll help you out. Help your neighbors, but at a reasonable volume. Go ahead and save that. Now we'll get started here. So I saw that a lot of us had experience in some programming languages, and the majority was HTML. So if you don't have any experience, this is our intro to it. HTML is a programming language made, out of, made up of tags. You write a tag, you write a code, where we're marking our document to behave or to do things in a certain way. The very first line of code that we have to write here is what kind of document this is, what kind of code are we dealing with. So we're going to be using this, this uh, syntax over and over and over. On the keyboard, let's type the less than symbol and the greater than symbol. Again, if you've got experience on this, this will be so slow. But don't worry, we'll get up to speed very quickly. If you want to type less than simple, greater than simple. We're going to use those two angle brackets over and over and over as we write our, our code. 
and inside those angle brackets will be some specific HTML code. The first thing we need to type here in the angle brackets, uh, let me say also one thing, if the text is too small on your screen, what you can do on your keyboard is hold control and then press plus and that'll zoom you in to view your code a little larger. Control plus, control minus. Notice I'm going to be zooming in and out, hopefully for you to read this code. But if you want to zoom in, you can do control plus, control minus. What's that? Try control mouse. Control, hold control, and then scroll with the mouse wheel. So anyway, here at the top, let's type within the angle brackets, let's type the exclamation point, D-O-C-T-Y-P-E, so that's one word, doc type, notice the exclamation point, doc type, we're about to say what type of document are we working with? Within the angle brackets, space, so I'm still inside the two angle brackets, HTML. We're about to create an HTML5 compliant document. If you're an old hat at HTML, you might remember the old doc type that was doc type slash xhtml 1.1 slash slash wc3 slash ddt dash blah 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 blah. There used to be a long definition of what kind of document we're working with. Now simply here, this is the latest and the greatest. This is HTML5, the latest version of the language. No need to put a number 5 there. That's it. We're saying this is a modern web project. Go to the end of the line and press enter so we get to line two. Line one, line two. And then we're going to type another tag. I'm going to use shorthand very quickly because I'm not going to say over and over left bracket, right black bracket. I'm going to say tags. So if I'm talking about the HTML tag, that means we're going to do the less than and greater than symbols again. And inside of the symbols, we will write HTML. That's the HTML tag. Let's get used to that. We're talking about tags, codes, and this is the way we write in HTML. They're in these angle brackets. At the end of that line, press Enter two times. And the big thing about HTML is that it works with pairs of tags. The ML of HTML is markup language. We are marking that in certain parts of our document, they look or behave a certain way. This sheet of paper that I got randomly here, there's text at the top that looks big and bold. Smaller text, text in columns, bullet points. Basically, it's marked, big, bold text. It's marked, small text. It's marked, bullet points. That's what HTML is. We are marking content. It's a language where we're marking. And therefore, usually we have a pair to say, start making it bold here and stop making it bold there. We've marked it from here to here. So we need to say here, we, started H we start our HTML project and let's end our HTML project. Let's write the same HTML tag again. But the big difference is, this is our starting tag and this is our ending tag when we add a slash. Angle bracket slash HTML angle bracket. Starting, closing. 99% of the time, this is how HTML works. We have pairs of tags that we say from here to here, do this. From here to there, do that. 99% of the time. One of the 1% is the doc type. There is no closing doc type pair. Don't worry about writing a closing pair. HTML, definitely we have a pair. Click on your doc type, just click anywhere up on that doc type code. Notice just how Notepad shows it to you in that soft blue color. Notice the HTML tags there are in a darker blue color. Notice if you click once on the HTML starting tag, Notepad then shows you its closing pair and a little line that connects it. And that red angle bracket, that red angle bracket, it's just telling you there's your pair because eventually we're going to end up with hundreds of lines of code. You're going to lose track of your code, but if you have a civilized code editor like Notepad++ and the like, it will help you with your code. 
inside line three, also we've got line numbers. So when we talk about our code, we want to reference line numbers. Don't say, go to where your HTML tag is right below it. No, you say line three, because we're going to have lots of code, and sometimes they repeat. Go to line three and press tab on the keyboard, just the plain old tab, so it tabs over. Now we're going to write another pair of tags. We're going to write the head tag. It has a pair. <coughs> so that always means when I say we've got a pair, that means that you're going to write the opening version of it, simply head, and then enter two times. Notice it automatically kept the indenting here, hopefully. Another mark of a civilized code editor. And then you're going to write the closing head tag, which needs the slash at the front right here. Not at the end. Right here. Angle bracket, slash, head. Angle bracket. Pair. should highlight. If your code, especially the colors, don't look like mine, that probably means you've typed something wrong. So as we're typing this code and something goes wrong, call me over, but also look to see is your color coding the same? There's oftentimes a big indicator um, that something is wrong when the color is wrong. Is there anything wrong with my code? How did you know that? The color, exactly. I accidentally typed the Z here. It was very easy to accidentally type, and it looks correct when I've got 500 lines of code. But that should be blue. It's black. So there was a mistake. I'm not saying that you're going to get red when there's a mistake and blue when there's a when there's a proper code. Unfortunately, it's not color coded that way. It'll just show you different color coding for different aspects. After the head tag, press after the head pair, press enter. And next then we'll type the body tags. Same sort of syntax. And syntax means how do you how is something structured? The syntax of English is, um, how does it go again? Subject, uh, sub subject, noun, verb, right? How, do, how did that go back in English class? The proper sentence in English is object, verb, noun, something like that? <laughs> something like that. The participles, don't forget those. But what I mean is Spanish. Spanish has the other way. You know, in English you say, the cat is black. In Spanish, you would say el gato negro. You have the the adjective first, and then in English, you have the adjective second, right? I'm just saying the syntax of the language, HTML. We're going to see that there is a method to it, the same sorts of structure over and over. Let's go to line 7. You should have a line 7 because I Press enter twice here. Tab, so now we've tabbed in here. These tabs that we're writing are optional. HTML technically could be written on one long line that goes on and on and on, off the edge of the page, way over here. But we press enter and divide it up into readable chunks, and we press tab to create readable chunks of code. The computer won't care once we compile this, once we process this. But I care because I want to be able to read this when I come back later. So this tab here is optional, but I tabbed to make it readable. And notice at the very bottom, length 77, line 9, line 7, column 9. So I'm <coughs> on, um, I've, got, I've got 9 lines in total. I've got 77 uh, bytes, I think. And uh, I'm currently on line 7, column 9. So if I move over to the left, now I'm on column 5. So that's another way to get around, because we're going to have lots of lines of code. How do we get to the right place? Line 7, column 5. We have a way to zoom in on what we need to do. So in line 7, let's type the classic first line of code that every programmer usually learns when they learn any language. We'll type the classic, hello world. Mm -hmm. For decades, for decades, hello world has been the classic proof of concept that we know how to program. So this project is going to say hello world. And this is enough. This is a website. This is a full 
featured website, basically. Um, but I see the code, and I can't exactly think in code. I need to actually have it processed. I need to have it then converted into something more familiar. So our workflow will be, we're going to write code, we're going to save our work, and then we're going to run our code. I haven't saved my code yet because I get that little red symbol. What the heck is that anyway? It's not saved. It's not saved conceptually, but what is it? It's a, it's a floppy disk. Those things we don't see anymore. But it still has the concept of saving. I haven't saved it yet. The red floppy means I haven't saved it. So at the top here, notice we've got a save. Or you can go to File, Save. Or you can do Control S. The point is, go ahead and save your file. The disk becomes blue. Whenever you make any change, it'll become red. So one of the things early on, my code doesn't work. I come over and I say, you haven't saved it yet. So make sure you always save your work. Save your work. And then what we need to do is go to the top menu, Run. And then you can select from any of our web browsers. I'm simply going to select Firefox because it's the first one on the list. I don't want to move too far. Any web browser you want to use here is there. Go ahead and save your work. Go to Run, and then launch Firefox. You should get a web browser. And there's all our hard work so far. Yay. Our HTML code is translated by the web browser into a web page. We've got a web page. Raise your hand if it worked. Good. Raise your hand if you need any help. So it worked for everyone? Good. Um, that's what our workflow is going to be. We're going to write code, we're going to save it, we're going to run it. You can run it in Chrome, Firefox, whatever you want. And I'm doing Firefox at the moment. We need to go back to go back to your notepad. You might have a bunch of windows open. Keep track of them. You want to go back to Notepad, right there. You can close the browser or leave it open, whatever, but go back to your code. At the moment, my website, my web page, says Hello World. And at the top here, it says, you are viewing a file, blah, blah, blah. Don't you usually see some message right there on the tab of a website? Yes. All right, let's edit that. Let's make it say a message there. That goes back into our head section. Body, basically, is everything that appears in the main viewport of the web browser. We'll learn that term in more detail later, viewport. But body will show basic stuff here. Head will show metadata, data outside of the body, which is up here. And so we need a tag called title. Let's go back to line four. We'll write the title tag, but let's write it a little different this time. Let's write title, and on the same line, let's write title slash title. Open title, close title. We'll keep it on the same line, because it doesn't matter. You could have broken this up into two separate lines, or kept it on one line. Whatever way you want to do it, it will work just fine. I'm going to do it this way. And in title, we will write Android slash HTML5 day one. So we've written some title. It's inside of the title tags. Open, close, slashes. Make sure that. Write your text there. Save it. Go back to run, launch Firefox, or refresh your web browser if it's still open. Go ahead and save it and run it. Save button, run, launch Firefox. There it is. Question. Good question. How do you run on brackets? Uh, you should go to the folder where you saved your file and just double click your HTML file and that'll open in the web browser. All right, so here, there's version 1 of my code, there's version 2. 
if you keep your web browser open, it's going to show you a new tab every time. I kind of like that because I like to see the progression of my code. So I've got two tabs now, version 1, and then it, when I ran it again, it gave me version 2. If you just want to keep one tab open, just refresh. Reload your, your screen. But I've got now here with some code at the top, I've got a title. All right, so let's go back to the body section and what I would like is instead of hello world looking kinda kinda puny I want it to look big and bold and interesting looking right now I have not marked hello world really as anything special it goes to the default it's plain text but I'm gonna mark it now I'm gonna write more HTML code to mark it to be big and bold and important looking so we'll go back to line 7 and before the word hello, we'll type the tag h1, that's a number one. And because I need to say start here and end here, at the end of line 7 I'm gonna say end h1, and but I, what I mean by that of course is slash h1. Start the tag, end the tag, and ending a tag is with slash. That little thing is a relatively big change. Save it and run it to see the result. Eventually, maybe, learn the keyboard shortcut to launch your web browser. And there we go. Uh, hello world, big and bold. Important looking. There's before. We didn't mark it as anything special. And then after that, I marked it as an H1, big and bold. Run. And by the keyboard shortcut, they're all listed right there. So the handy, memorable Control Alt Shift X launches Firefox. Or Chrome, Control Alt Shift R. Okay, um, let's go to line, let's make a new line 8. I'm on line 7 and at the end press enter so I get a new line 8. Notice everything gets pushed down. Now we've got 10 lines of code. Um, I'm going to write now a little bit of plain text. Plain text is default, but I don't want to rely on defaults. As we move on in the class, we'll learn that, that defaults often get in our way. It doesn't do what we expected it with defaults. So it's better to define exactly what we need. So I want plain text, and plain text is basically the paragraph tag. And paragraph is just P, the P tag. And I can keep that on one line or multiple lines, but I'm going to break it into multiple lines. So press enter after your P tag twice and close your P tag, paragraph. And now between lines 8 and 10, I've got a paragraph. And notice this red line here connects them to show you there's a connection. If you misspelled it, it turns the wrong color and you might not have the connection anymore. <coughs> so anyway, P tags. And what we're going to say here is um, inside the paragraphs tab, and then we will write CRN9085F, that's the code number of this class. Remember everyone, mute your devices please, your laptops and such, if you haven't done so yet. Alright, so that's some plain text. Um, at the end of that line, press enter tab it, and then we'll write um, part 1 Android and HTML5. Save it and run it. Check your result. So we're writing a paragraph. I typed some text, I pressed enter, and then I wrote a little more text. Save it and run it and see your result. 
what's your result? I can save it. I'm going to run it. Wait a minute. I thought I pressed enter. I wrote the class number, I pressed enter, and I wrote part one. Why did it not show that? <coughs> HTML, you have to be specific because the default behavior of HTML is unless you specify a break or a new paragraph, it doesn't make a new paragraph or a break. So mine's running together. It's got that word, no break, no space, and then same line. We didn't specify it. So I'm going to back up to line 9, and at the end of line 9, we're going to write the break tag, which is BR. And BR is one of the 1% that does not have a pair. There is no pair of BR tags. You just write BR. Now save it and run it. And you should see that CRN is in one line, break. Part 1 is on another line. So I'm showing here that uh, we need to be specific because defaults oftentimes don't work for us. We need to be specific. Is this working for everyone so far? Anyone any any help? And so we need to be specific. So that means actually we're going to back up and be a little bit more specific because we've said at the top our document type is HTML, HTML5. But we weren't specific enough to say what sort of a, um, set of characters that we can use, what, what alphabets and such. Because I might be making a project that I want to be visible by people that speak English and Spanish and Russian and Hebrew and Japanese, etc. I want to be able to use the different uh, alphabets of the world. So we're going to back up, back to the head section, give yourself a new line 4. There's a new line right above title. We're going to add a new tag here. This is one that does not have a pair. So you start writing your tag code, and this tag is the meta tag. Meta. If you've heard of the concept of uh, metaphysics, metaphysical, what would you say a definition of metaphysical is? Physical is something tangible, metaphysical is something beyond physical, un intangible maybe of the mind and such, something beyond, meta. In code here, meta tags are also something like that, that they're beyond the, the usual physical uh, scope or visual scope of the project. So this is something that's being added to the code a little bit beyond that. And what we have to specify here is actually known as an attribute, because what we've been doing here is writing tags and then stuff between the tags. We're going to write something inside the tag, like we've got with doc type, that HTML is an attribute. We want an attribute for meta, so press a space right there. We're going to see how this is useful as we go on, but we've got meta tag linked to add attributes. And the attribute that I want here is C-H-A-R-S-E-T, car set, or char set, if you want to say. Car set, character set. What's the set of characters? What's the alphabets that we can use? Equals. And then on the keyboard, we can type uh, just the, um, we'll, do the, we'll do the double quote, which is right next to enter, right? The, the quote symbol one quote symbol. Did you notice as soon as you type the quote symbol everything turned purple? That's also an indicator something might not be right. Oops, I forgot the pair. Quote, end quote. So if everything turned purple, make sure you close your quote like that. Meta car set. What set of characters can we use? We want to use as many uh, as we can, not just focusing on English letters, because what if my app is also going to be sold in Russia? I want to use the Cyrillic alphabet. So, um, inside the quotes we will write UTF-8. 
basically this is a standard that will encompass just about every language of the world, Japanese, Hebrew, Spanish, um, etc., etc. So you won't really see anything different in the app, but this is for us being forward thinking that I want to add multiple languages to my project, for example. And here I'm saying I have access to basically all the characters. Save that. Run it one more time. And if your project looks basically like mine, Great. We're going to take our first break. When we come back, we'll keep working with some HTML. This is what I've got so far. We're on our way. So it's 7.22. We'll take a 10-minute break. When we come back, we'll go on. We'll be back at 7.32.